In this challenge, our goal is to identify a Windows 7 machine on the network and to exploit it using the Eternal Blue vulnerability. Once exploited, we want to um, locate a file called target.x and exfiltrate that file from our um, compromised machine. So let's start by um, taking some notes. So our strategy compromise Windows 7 machine in order to locate and exfiltrate target.docx. Um, that's the goal of the exercise. The tactic. How are we going to do this? Well, the tactic is um, a multi-step process. One of them is to perform a network scan. Uh, to analyze the report um, or should say the scan output in order to um, identify the Windows 7 machine. Machine 3 is to gain access to that Windows, uh, to the machine using Eternal Blue exploit. 4 is to locate a uh, target file on the machine. And 5 is to exfiltrate the file. That's our tactic. Operationally, um, that means that performing the network scan um, will be um, run on map. In order to um, identify Windows 7. Uh, so let's start with that. Um, what we have to do um, is to run nmap on the given target range. The given target range is 192.168.42.2 all the way up to 192.168.42.110. There's two ways to run nmap. One of them is by using it um, as is, the way you see here. Uh, the other one is by running it with elevated privileges. If I run nmap with elevated privileges, it will perform an ARP discovery rather than an ICMP discovery um, and it's able to do the half open scans rather than a full open scan um, which means that we'll get more reliable results although it will take longer. Once I kick off this scan I do estimate um, it might take maybe even a half hour to complete but that's okay we have time. So let's just grab that last line um, and copy and paste this We'll kick it off. It's going to ask us for our username and password because we are elevating privileges and it's running. As the scan is running, it doesn't look like it does much. However, once you hit enter, it will give you a status update. In the status update, we'll see that so far we've been scanning for 20 seconds that our target range of 103 machines um, has been identified as having six machines being up and running. Six are currently undergoing this uh, SYN stealth scan. Um, it does look like we'll complete by 1438. It is now 1435. I can tell you that's not going to be an accurate estimate. It would be fine if we were on the local area network, but we are over a remote network using a VPN tunnel. So it's going to be taking quite a bit longer. Um, this estimate of 3 minutes and 20 seconds remaining will be wrong. We'll be back when the output results come in. Okay, we're back. The scan completed, took a while, um, but you know, we're, uh, we have the results. I copy and pasted them out into um, our report file, and now we can start analyzing them. Let's take some notes. Uh, we have all the detailed findings, but they're not terribly uh, interesting yet. Um, we're just going to summarize them. Our first uh, IP address that was found to be up and running um, is 192.168.42.34. Let me highlight it right here. And what we'll see is three open ports, uh, an FTP port on TCP port 21, an SSH server on TCP 22, and an HTTP server on TCP port 80. Um, that makes me initially at least suspect that this is some form of a Linux uh, unconfirmed, confirmed, um, probably running some form of a web server um, unconfirmed. 
The next uh, machine that was found was 192.168.42.42. Let's run there and highlight that one so you can see what we're talking about. And what we'll see um, is a whole bunch of open ports 135, 139, 445, 3389. Um, and if we look at the service names, it's MS RPC, Net BIOS, which is a Microsoft protocol, Microsoft DS, which is Microsoft, MSWBT server, that's Microsoft's remote desktop service. All of this indicates that this is a Windows machine. The open ports here that we see 152 all the way up to 157, that's typically an indication of a Windows 7-ish generation. So this might be um, our target. So for now, Windows unconfirmed. And it didn't look like it was running any types of network services other than what comes with a normal workstation. So we'll just go with Windows workstation unconfirmed. Next, our 49 uh, system, highlighted it here. Only two ports open, TCP port 80 for HTTP, TCP port 22 for SSH, that typically says Linux web server, but both of those are unconfirmed. We'll just add them to our notes for now though. Linux unconfirmed and web server unconfirmed. Moving on, 59 is the next one. We see only one port open, TCP 22, and no other ports. That could mean different things. For now, we're going to say it's a Linux system unconfirmed, confirmed, and it's a workstation unconfirmed, unconfirmed, because we couldn't find any network services. Onwards, port number uh, TCP IP address ending in 63, two ports open, 135, 445, nothing else. That tells me Windows. Um, and probably it is some form of a Windows server operating system. But it doesn't seem to be offering uh, any services because there were no network services open. So we'll just make note of that. And then lastly, we saw the IP address ending in 100. Scroll down a little bit. Here we go. I'll highlight it. Lots of open ports. Uh, but what stands out is TCP port 88, Kerberos, 389 LDAP, 636 LDAP SSL, um, this is telling me Windows Active Directory Server. So this is some form of a Windows server, unconfirmed, AD server, unconfirmed. And we'll keep the detailed notes for reference later on. So looking at our findings so far, of our entire IP range, we were able to bring it down to six IP addresses that actually provided services. And of those six, we identified three as being most likely Windows serv uh, systems. Our objective is to identify the Windows 7 system. So that's our next step. How can we take these findings and confirm what versions of Windows are running on them? Let's take a look again at these Windows machines. We see that TCP port 135 and 445 are common being all of them in 4242. In 4263, we see those same two por uh, ports open. And in 42100, we see 135 and 445 being present as well. That's useful information. Oh, save. Now we can turn to our Metasploit framework. The Metasploit framework not only has exploits, it also has um, 
auxiliary modules, scanners, that can help us refine our understanding. And in this case, what we're looking for is an auxiliary module, auxiliary, which is a scanner for the Windows SMB subsystem, and we're just looking for the SMB version. Our R host, the first one that we're interested in identifying, is 4242. And when we run the exploit, it tells us, well, this host is running Windows 7 Professional. So, this is indeed a Windows 7 machine, a workstation as we expected it to be. Let's take a look at our target number 63. We expected that to be a Windows server. And let's see what comes out. Windows 2008 R2 standard uh, service spec 1. And the last one, 100, our uh, alleged domain controller. Um, turns out to be running Windows 2016. Let's update our report with those findings. Um, as now, it's no longer speculation. We now know this for a fact. So, back to the top. 4242 is Windows 7 Professional. Confirmed. 4263, Windows Server, indeed. Uh, 2008R2, standard, server spec 1, confirmed. And this is Windows Server 2016, confirmed. Our objective was to find the Windows 7 machine. We now have done that. We have now confirmed with certainty that IP address 4242 is the one that we are looking for. Next step, exploitation. In order to exploit this vulnerability, we'll jump back into the Metasploit framework. Um, and we were given from our initial um, scope of work that exploitation of that Windows 7 machine needed to be done via the Eternal Blue vulnerability. We can search Metasploit and say, what do you know about Eternal Blue? And it's going to tell us a few things. It's going to tell us I have uh, an auxiliary module specifically for that. I have another one here, but I also have exploits. Um, and this one is actually the most promising one. It is an exploit for Windows system against the SMB subsystem using MS17010 Eternal Blue as its vulnerability. Let's copy that out. The other two are for Windows 8 um, or for a different tool set that we're using. So let's start using that exploit that we just identified. That's this one. Copy, paste. We want to make sure that we set our target to the target that we are interested in. And we have to choose a payload. The payload in this case is a payload for Windows systems, specifically a 64 bits Windows system. Um, it is a meter perter variation. And we want it to bind to a TCP port so that we can remotely connect to it. This is all the setup we need to do. So in other words, we chose the target, uh, the exploit. We identified the target and we identified what actions need to be taken upon completion of the exploit. At this point, all we have to do is actually run the exploit and let Meterpreter and Metasploit do their magic. Okay, Meterpreter session opened. Let's see if this is indeed the case. Can we drop into a shell? Yeah, we can. So at this point, we have our Windows um, command shell. We can just walk around the file system and do what we want to do. Now, we could look for this file manually, but there are actually better ways of doing this. We need to search for a file. Meterpreter has a, an option for that. Search. It's a file called target.docx. This will take a while. Um, Meterpreter is now actually crawling the file system of this Windows 7 machine. Um, and file system crawling takes a while. So let's wait for the results to come in. That shouldn't take much longer. Here we go. Two files were found, a one-byte file, we're just going to completely ignore this, 
and a 11 kilobyte ish file. That's the one we're most likely interested in. We have to exfiltrate it from our file system. And a fancy word, uh, exfiltration, really just means download it. So, copy this. Now, uh, backslashes have special meaning, they're escape characters, so we have to escape the escape characters to remove their special meaning. Download. Okay, in this case it said skipped, and that's because I already have downloaded this file, but otherwise it would have downloaded it right away. And we can now drop out of Meterpreter, we can drop out of the Metasploit framework, and we see that we have downloaded our target.x file. Let's update our report with our findings. So back into our report, just to update that uh, we have recorded what we needed to do. So step three was to gain access using Eternal Blue. Um, so step three, gain access using Eternal Blue. We used uh, Meterpreter, Meterpreter Exploit, Windows, SMB, MS, um, what was it? Uh, 17.0.10 Eternal Blue um, against our host 192.162.168.42.42 uh, with payload window, uh, Windows X64 Meterpreter Bind TCP. Exploitation was successful. Access gained. Step four uh, was to locate the target file on the machine. Um, locate target file on machine. We used meterpreter search um, for target.docx. And step five was exfiltrate the file. And we used meterpreter download um, C windows uh, now we'll see uh, what was it users user desktop target dot docx um, file successfully downloaded mission complete that is the end detailed scan results. We'll give this a heading and we are good to go.